representations. Willow trees, and in, uh, often in a very kind of a, a plush manner. Um, an extraordinary attempt to take the most processed of products, a finished car or truck, and make that finished car or truck personally your own. How do we measure wind direction and speed? The wind vane is used to get the direction of the wind. Now the direction of the wind, uh, let, me, let me do this first. The direction of wind is said to be uh, the direction from which the wind is blowing. That is, if the wind, let's say that this is our compass rose here, if the wind is blowing from left to right or from west to east, then we say that this is a west wind, a wind which is blowing from At night, the circulation reverses. Things cool off and when these shiver. Anyway, it's like, a, it's like a hot wind, so they call it the Santana wind. And then some people have uh, mung that to become Santa Ana. All right, anyway, anyway, the wind is from more or less from the north or northeast, from land to ocean. It overcomes our sea breeze. Now, the unfortunate thing is that in uh, Let's see. Our Santa Ana season is from April through, um, not April. It's from September through April, more or less the fall through the spring months. In September, when the, when the Santa Ana season is just starting, you see we have, let's see, here's the uh, land, and then somewhere out here, ocean. There's supposedly a sea breeze trying to come in. trying to come in. I mean, it's going to try to come in because um, it's warmer here than it is over the ocean. So we get a thermal circulation this way. Well, this directly opposes the Santa Ana wind there. When this Santa Ana starts to weaken, when the wind speed here weakens, then the sea breeze starts to come back in. But before that, they both cancel each other out, so the wind stops blowing altogether. When the wind stops blowing in Southern Cal or in the Los Angeles area, that's when the pollution uh, builds up. The smoggiest uh, times of the year is uh, right around September and uh, late April when the Santa Anas are very weak. And so they're just strong enough to cancel out the sea breeze and thus give us no wind flow. It gets very hot. We hit some temperature records during these times. And it, it is also very smoggy. This stereotype that Handlin presents is of the, is of the immigrant as uprooted. The, the title of his book is very significant. He sees the immigrant, and he's talking primarily of new European immigrants, that is, of peasants from southern and eastern Europe, but he makes a general argument which can be applied to immigrants in other parts of Europe, too. Um, he sees them as victims of, as I've said this before, of, of very powerful historical forces over which they can exert almost no control. Industrialization, urbanization, famine, war. Oh, I just want to make a, one other point. OK, so the problems with fear locality there are problems with exora locality. As I said on Monday, we have neolocality. Neolocality has problems, too. 
And those problems are you take a young couple and they're starting out on their own and you just pretty much throw them to the wolves. They're, they're sort of cast upon their own resources without a lot of help from the different families. And this can be stressful as well. So there are problems with neolocality. Now what is kinship? Well, we have a definition in our glossary. And it's not all that informative. It kind of skirts the issue. The definition is simply that kinship is relationships based on or modeled after the culturally recognized connection between parents and their children. Now, you really don't have to write that down because it's there for you in the glossary. And moreover, the definition isn't particularly informative either. You have to think first, what is the relationship between parents and their children? What does this mean in, to an anthropologist? And what does this mean to us in this society and people in all other societies? Now, what anthropologists talk about when they talk about the meaning of kinship is they talk about genealogical connections. And what I'm going to put up as an overhead.